Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss different astronomical objects, from stars to brown dwarfs to the difference between asteroids, comets, and meteors. Let's get started. Get it? Star Ted? Anyway, let's begin with stars. To be specific, stars are balls of gas composed mostly of hydrogen and helium. Each star is held together by its own gravity, and nuclear fusion reactions in its core support it against gravity and produce photons and heat. They come in colors, too. The more blue a star looks, the hotter it is, while the more red it is, the cooler it is. Now, binary stars are two stars that orbit the same point, so it's two together. Star clusters are those that are from the same origin and are gravitationally bound for some time. Speaking of a star's origin, stars come from certain nebulae. A nebula is a giant cloud of dust and gas. Some are formed from the remains of a dying star, such as a supernova. Other nebulae are where stars form. White dwarfs are stars near the end of their lives. The star has used up almost all, if not all, of its nuclear fuel and collapsed to a size similar to Earth. Now, a supernova is the expanding or exploding of a star. A supernova happens because of a specific change in the star's core. One of two changes may occur. One is from a binary star system, where a white dwarf star steals too much matter from the other star until it eventually explodes. The other specific change is for a single star, where the star runs out of nuclear fuel, its mass flows into its core and weighs it down so much that there's too much gravitational force for it to withstand, and the star then explodes. Now what is a supernova remnant? Well, it's the remains of a supernova. It's bounded by an expanding shock wave and consists of ejected material expanding from the explosion, as well as the interstellar material it sweeps up and shocks along the way. After undergoing a supernova, a massive supergiant star will collapse into a neutron star, a dense, collapsed core version of the once massive star. Now, if a single star undergoes a supernova and isn't a supergiant star, it may form a black hole instead. These are places in space where it's everything is pulled in, including light. The gravity of the black hole is so strong because matter has been squeezed into a tiny space. Now, as we transition from stars to planets, let's talk about the in-between. Brown dwarfs. Their size lies somewhere in between that of a small star and a giant planet like Jupiter. They can't sustain the fusion of hydrogen like a regular star, though, so they've been called failed stars at times. Now, going to planets. According to the International Astronomical Union, a planet must have three qualifications. One, it must orbit a star. Two, it must have enough gravity to force it into a spherical shape. And three, it must be big enough that its gravity cleared away any other objects of similar size near its orbit around its star. Now, what's the difference between a planet and a dwarf planet? Dwarf planets have very similar qualifications to those of planets. In fact, the first qualification is the same. It must orbit a star. The second barely differs, saying that a dwarf planet must have enough gravity to force it into a nearly round shape. Nearly round, it being the difference between that and a planet. The third is that the dwarf planet hasn't cleared the other objects of a similar size near its orbit. And now there's also a fourth thing. The fourth being that it isn't a satellite that was sent out to space. Just to make sure that's cleared up. Now exoplanets have all the same qualifications as planets, except they're particularly the ones that orbit other stars rather than any of the planets of our solar system. Let's jump to a bit bigger of a scale. What is a galaxy? A galaxy is a huge collection of gas, dust, and billions of stars and their solar systems held together by gravity. There are spiral galaxies, which look as they sound, as well as ring galaxies, which also look as they sound. Same with elliptical and barred. There are also irregular galaxies, such as polar ring galaxies, which are rare ones with a bunch of dust, stars, and gas orbiting in rings nearly perpendicular to the rest of the galaxy. Look up some of the others if you're interested in seeing more irregular galaxies. Now for quasars. Ever wonder what lies at the center of a galaxy? In some galaxy centers, there's a quasar, an extremely bright active nucleus where a supermassive black hole is surrounded by a gaseous accretion disk. 
basically a disk of gas, plasma, dust, or particles around an astronomical object. Now what's a void? Voids are the vast spaces between the large-scale structures of the universe, which contain few to no galaxies. Okay, how about we scale down to something a bit smaller? What other objects are there besides stars and planets that are pretty small? Perhaps plenty of asteroids? These are small, rocky objects that orbit the sun. Comets are similar to asteroids in that they are small objects that orbit the sun, but they're composed of frozen gases, rock and dust. Jets of gas and dust form long tails on the comets to where they can be seen even from Earth. To be more clear on the differences between space rocks, let's describe a meteor too. A meteor is a space rock that enters the Earth's atmosphere, and it can only be called a meteor when it does that. Sometimes meteors occur in clusters known as a meteor shower. These are what people call shooting stars. Now for some exciting extras. You might come across some Messier objects and not know what does Messier mean. Let's change that. Messier objects are a collection of deep space objects such as nebulae, galaxies, and star clusters cataloged by a French astronomer from the 18th century named Charles Messier. He created this list due to wanting to find comets, but found these instead. There are 110 Messier objects total. If you see an M in front of some numbers, it usually means it's a Messier object. Now the NGC objects are part of a more extensive list. NGC stands for the New General Catalog, which contains deep space objects like star clusters, nebulae, and galaxies. It was compiled in the 1880s by Jean-Louis Emile Durer as an update to existing catalogs. And that's all we're going to discuss. Thank you for taking some time to learn some astronomy, and feel free to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos on science, art, and math. And check out our website, Steam for Sam. See you next time.